Things in pickleball are evolving at a crazy pace. Things are very different from what they were just a few short years ago, and it keeps changing rapidly. The caliber of players has certainly grown, and the skills many of them are bringing in are staggering. The equipment technology has certainly improved by leaps and bounds as well. The combination of the arrival of these changes has taken the game to new levels. Most notably, the use of strategic power has skyrocketed. There's no question that power has arrived. It's here to stay and will likely just keep getting bigger and better. So it begs the question, is dinking dead? As much as many would like to think it's true, and yes, I'm looking at you bangers and those that just love to hit hard all the time, it simply isn't true and likely will never be. Dinking is still and will likely always be an important part of the game for the simple reason that when all four players are up at the non-volley zone line, a dink is often strategically the wisest option because of that non-volley zone. If you can get the ball to bounce, then it significantly limits your opponent's options, and the non-volley zone certainly helps with that because it forces a bounce because you can't stand in there and volley. That's what it was designed for. So in this all four players up at the line formation, when an attack with a high likelihood of success is not available to you, a dink is in order, and an effective dinking game is very useful to help you set up your next attack. And that leads to the next big question of how to strategize an effective, aggressive dinking game to set up that next attack, and how do you build the skills to do it? That's exactly what we're going to unpack in today's video. I'm Nicole Havlicek. This is Primetime Pickleball. We've helped thousands of players play better pickleball, and we can help you play your best game too. So please subscribe to this channel. It'll help you get notified as new videos come out. And it really helps with the YouTube algorithm to help get this information out more broadly to more people. We really appreciate it. All right, let's dive into today's important lesson. So we're going to build our dinking skills in stages. We'll work through these levels of skill from beginner all the way up to the most advanced level of dinking capabilities. For each of these dinking levels, be sure that you check the box for the level on the forehand as well as on the backhand side before moving on. Don't skimp on that backhand side, please, I beg you. Level one, consistency. So for consistency, you're gonna hit in a narrow range straight back and forth to one another just like this. Both of you are hitting a dink in such a way that it bounces comfortably in a range about here so that it has some time to rise before it gets to your training partner and they can have a comfortable contact point after a rise. That's all we're doing here. This is beginner level. Truthfully, these are what we would call dead dinks in pickleball, and they're not desirable in the long run. A dead dink is a dink that is not pressing the opponent in any way. They could easily hit a dink that presses you, or they could possibly attack. Strategically, it's not wise, but at first, don't worry about that. Set that aside. Other upcoming levels will take care of that. At first, the only question that you must be able to answer yes to before moving on is can you consistently hit a basic dink even if it's considered a dead dink? And can you hit the dink consistently on both the forehand and backhand side? If you can comfortably hit it to the range I mentioned and do 40, so that's 20 touches each, with total command as if you can do it in your sleep, then you're qualified to move on to the next level. Level 2, Lateral Accuracy. Can you move it across the kitchen? So they're going to hit it right back to you and you're going to move it from side to side approximately two feet at a time. First in one direction and then back the other way. It should take you about five dings to get it across the half of the kitchen. You should be able to get there and back comfortably in control full command. You can say that you have successfully completed this level if you can get there and back twice comfortably. Can you do that with just your forehand? Can you do that with just your backhand? Can you do that alternating forehands and backhands? You don't pass unless it's a confident yes to each of those questions. Then work on mixing it around laterally, ad hoc, at any target that you choose on the fly. But be sure to decide and then hit. Don't be fuzzy about what your target is, because you can only know if you're accurate if you hit that target. 
pick the target in your mind and then be sure that you're hitting that target before moving on to the next level. Level three, add depth accuracy. Once you clearly have control over your lateral movement, keep the lateral movement and add depth movement. Good dinking targets are quite specific and systematic when you're trying to work the player across from you and get them out of position so that you can create openings for more aggressive dinks and put them in even more trouble and ultimately get shots that you can attack. Though to be clear, we're not attacking in these dinking exercises. Right now, it's dinks only. Good targets are to press them at one of their feet or even right between their feet. The backhand side foot is usually a great option to hammer regularly because it's a low contact point backhand dink for them and that is the shakiest dink for a lot of people. But generally if you're hitting it in their direction you want to aim for it to of course always remain low so pretty tight crossing the net with a landing target in this range here so that you're jamming them up in their feet. Low dinks at the feet are tough. When you're dinking in a direction to the side of them, you can pull them short and then push it deep and behind them in the other direction. That works on both sides. So short here and then deep over there or short here and then deep there. I love the pull in and then push back dinking play whenever I can create it. If they defend it well, that's totally fine. You just do it again. Eventually you'll press them into a tough enough spot to do more damage. You can also push it deep first and then pull it in short. Or you can do a push pull or a pull push on the same side. So generally you just want to be yanking them around the box laterally as well as with different depths and if you're going at them then mostly jam them up in the feet. That's the strategy in a nutshell. So at this level, they've been hitting it basically right back to you as you work on your patterns on them. So your goal is to apply pressure with location variety at this level while you're receiving a dink that's not stressing you too much right now. Level four is withstanding pressure. So now they can do the same lateral and depth variety to you that you have been doing to them. At this stage, you can make a game out of it. You can play games to five points and you're both hitting pressing dinks that like we just discussed in those patterns, if you can. And if you're in trouble, then you just bump it over and do what we would call a reset dink that just keeps you in the point and from there work on finding ways to apply pressure again. But first order of business is to get yourself out of trouble if you are quite pressed in a particular dink, as at some point you will be. So reset dinks are a key skill. Level five is applying and withstanding even more pressure. At this level, you're gonna be doing everything you did in level four with the lateral and depth pressure, and now you're gonna be adding spins as you mix those locations. This adds another layer of complexity for them to deal with. Mix in slice dinks with your forehand and backhand, and also topspin dinks, which you're likely to do mostly off the forehand side. You can use topspin on the backhand if you have a two-handed backhand dink. I'd recommend considering adding this dink to your arsenal over time if it's not something you have right now. You might be asking, well, why not topspin on a one-handed backhand dink? On a one-handed backhand topspin shot, in general, dinks included, you need to have your contact point well out in front because your hitting side shoulder is in front and not in the back like it is on your forehand. So late contacts are more forgiving on that side, on that forehand side. And you're just not gonna get super out in front contacts on dinks against good teams that know how to hit pressing dinks unless you're reaching in for a dink volley. And if you get one that's high enough to do topspin on, since you have to get under it quite a bit, then it's probably high enough to attack. So you'd be doing that. You wouldn't be dinking. On all other dinks that are coming to the backhand side, they'll most likely be most well suited for a slice dink in response. Once you're working at this level of dinking, which is the highest level, you should be doing dinking games like this regularly to sharpen and deepen your skills. Once your dinks are quite developed at this level, you'll want to add the option to attack so that you don't get lulled into a false sense of complacency when you know that only another dink is coming. 
Once your dinking skills are at this level, where you can laterally move at will, move the depth around at will, and add spins at will, all kinds, and then also be able to hit reset dinks, you're going to want to revisit this game again and again regularly, basically for as long as you play the game, with ultimately the option to attack as well, so that you can keep sharpening your dinking skills over time, and this type of drilling and gaming will serve you for as long long as you play the game of pickleball, so be sure to come back to it again and again and again. As helpful as we think the tips we're sharing in today's video are, there's more to achieving success on the doubles court. Want a complete A to Z step-by-step -step blueprint for playing winning doubles pickleball? Check out our dominating doubles system today. Go to doublesystem.com to learn all about it. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and share. For more pro player pickleball tips, techniques, strategies, and more on how to take your game to the next level, please visit primetimepickleball.com. You'll find a clickable direct link in the video description below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one, and until then, happy pickling. Much of this footage was captured at the Oakland Hills Tennis Club in Oakland, California. A big thank you to them for the use of their amazing facility.